Okay, so in the last couple of videos, we took a look at how to start setting up a JavaFX application and then adding some content to it in the form of some kind of control, like a label, uh, being able to take that uh, control, put that into a container. Uh, the first example, we looked at putting that into an HBox and then being able to set up a scene with that HBox as the root node of the scene uh, based on that scene graph design that we took a look at as well. Uh, so now what I want to get into is looking at another piece of static content that we could add to our JavaFX applications. So uh, in addition to being able to create text, maybe we want to also go ahead and create some pictures, say like these images that we could add to it. Uh, in addition to this, we'll get into uh, dynamic or more interactive content like text fields and buttons a little bit later. But for now, we'll go ahead and focus on more static content. So pretty simple, straightforward content that we can add to our scenes in our JavaFX uh, applications. So taking a look at being able to set up images, we're going to need two particular classes from the JavaFX library. Uh, the first one is going to be the image class, which is used to actually load an image from either a file or, as we'll see in a moment, maybe from a web page. Uh, a couple of different data types or uh, file types that we can support with our image loader include things like uh, BMPs, JPEGs, GIFs, or PNGs. Uh, primarily, I'm just going to be working with a PNG file for this. Uh, the other class we're going to need is the image view class, which is actually used to display that loaded image in our GUI application. So we can see the two imports that we're going to need for this. Uh, when we bring in both of these, they're going to both come from the same package. Uh, it's the image package, which is located inside of the scene package. So we've got javafx.scene.image.image, image class, and then javafx.scene.image.image view for the image view class. And then once we've got that set up, we'll go ahead and create uh, our two different objects, one for the image and then one for the image view. Uh, we can see the constructor for each of these. So in the case of our image, it's going to take a string that has two parts to it. So the first part is going to specify the protocol. Uh, in this case, we're looking at the file protocol, meaning that we're trying to get an image file that's located on our computer system. And then the other component or the other part of this string is going to be the actual name of the file, including the extension for it. So say, for example, if you have some kind of image called my image and it's a PNG file, then you'd put my image.png there. Uh, for the other part, for the image view, uh, this constructor is just going to take the image that we've loaded. So in this case, we're just giving it that image object that we brought in. So what we'll go ahead and do now is we'll go ahead and start setting up some code to be able to grab an image file and go ahead and display that in our Java window or our Java FX application window. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and the image that I'm going to use. So I've listed it on this text editor right here. So we're going to go ahead and grab this link to go pull up the image that I'm going to be using as an example for this. So go ahead and grab that. Go ahead and come over to Chrome and put that in. So this is the image that I'm going to be using as an example for uh, displaying this in a JavaFX application. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take this image and I'm going to create a new project and then I'm going to save that into the appropriate director, uh, directory for that uh, NetBeans project. So I'm going to go ahead and open up NetBeans. Uh, we'll go ahead and close this start page. We'll go ahead and create a new project. So this will be a JavaFX application. Click Next. For this one, since this is going to be a demonstration of how to set up an image in our application, I'll just go ahead and call this image demo. I'll go ahead and click finish. Okay, so now we've got the code for this set up. Uh, we'll go ahead and start removing a couple of parts that we're not going to need. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this comment at the top. Uh, we'll leave the package statement for the classes. I'm going to go ahead and remove uh, each one of the ones that we don't need, we'll just go ahead and keep the three that we are going to need, which are the application scene and stage. In addition to these, we'll go ahead and add on those two import statements for our images. Also going to go ahead and remove that additional comment for our uh, class. So we'll do an import, 
Java FX dot scene dot image dot image. So we'll use this to be able to import the image class. We'll then do a second one, Java FX dot scene dot image dot image view. And this will be to bring in the image view class. So once we've got both of those, then we'll come into the actual uh, body of the class itself, start getting that set up, make a few adjustments for style. Go ahead and remove all of the code that it starts off with in our start method. And then we'll go ahead and take this main method and move that to the top. Stop there, and then we're all set and ready to go. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is, uh, now that we've got this set up, I'm gonna come over here to Chrome. We'll go ahead and save this image, and I'm gonna go ahead and save this inside of that Net, uh, NetBeans project. In order to do that, I'll need to navigate to it. So I'm gonna go to Documents, go to NetBeans Projects, and inside of here, we wanna go into the Image Demo Project, and for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and save it in the default location where it would expect to find that image, which is gonna be in the project directory. So that's gonna be right here. Uh, for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and remove uh, most of this name for it. Go ahead and take all this off. And for the image type, instead of doing a JPEG, let's say we name this as a PNG. And save that. And there's our image. Okay, so now that we got that set up, and close out that, come back over to NetBeans. And now we'll go ahead and start setting this up. So to make sure that I can keep track of what the name of that was, I'm gonna go ahead and go to Files right here. And it doesn't wanna display. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we've got our blue bonnets.png right here. Keep, uh, keep that file name in mind when we're setting this up. So right here, we're gonna do our new image. Uh, we'll go ahead and just use the same naming convention. So I'm just gonna call this image with uh, all lowercase. So this is equal to a new image. And then right here, we're gonna have that string. And inside of the string, I'm gonna have the name of the, or the, the type for the protocol, which is file, my colon, and then the name of the file. So because I put this into the project directory, uh, the only thing I need to specify here in order to go out and locate that file is just the name of it. So we'll just do bluebonnets.png. Uh, once we've got that set up, then we'll go ahead and create the image view from that loaded image. So we'll have our image view. I'll call that image view with a lowercase i but a capital V. See, this is equal to a new image view. And inside of here, uh, for this constructor, we'll go ahead and put in that loaded image. So we'll put in the image name that we have right here. And then once we've done this, we also wanna go ahead and make sure that we have a container to put this into. So in this particular case, I'm gonna be testing this out with a VBox. So we'll go ahead and demonstrate how to use that as well. So to start off with, to make sure that we can actually get that, we're gonna come up to the top here and we'll add another import statement to this application. So right here, I'll go ahead and put in an import statement to grab the VBox class. So I'm gonna do javafx.scene.layout.vbox and complete that. And now that we've got that, then we can go ahead and use that right here. Put VBox. Uh, I'll go ahead and use the same naming convention that I do for the HBox. So I'll just be the name in all lowercase VBox. This will be equal to a new VBox object. And for right now, the one thing that I'm going to be displaying in this container or putting inside of this container is going to be that image view. Okay. And to clarify now the purpose of a VBox, so if an HBox is used for a, a horizontal arrangement of content, say maybe like putting several items into a single row. Uh, VBox is gonna be for a vertical arrangement of content. So this is essentially like putting several items into a column. 
Uh, once we've got that set up, we will also go ahead and put this VBox into our scene. So this is going to be our root node. So we'll have our scene, we'll call it scene in all lowercase. This is equal to a new scene object. And we're using VBox as the root. Uh, as we noticed already, the dimensions for that image, it actually shows us those. If we take another quick look at that link, we can see that the image's dimensions, it's going to be 1500 for the uh, width and then 609 for the height. So we want to try to make sure that our application window is about the same dimensions. So let's go ahead and set it to uh, 1500 and 609. And we'll see whether or not it sizes up properly inside of that window. And then once we've got our scene, then we'll go ahead and set the scene for our stage. So we'll grab our primary stage. We'll do set scene. We'll put in that scene object. Because it does that by default when I auto-complete that line. We'll then go ahead and give this a title. So let's call this one something like my first image. Since this will be uh, possibly your first program that displays an image in JavaFX. And then we'll have primary stage dot show. So we can go ahead and actually display that application window. Uh, we'll go ahead and save this. And then we'll go ahead and run it. See if everything's working properly. Good. So we were able to display it. Uh, it looks like all of the content is being sized up properly and fitting within the window. So our whole image is being displayed there. And that 1500 by 609 uh, set of dimensions that I specified. Uh, and everything's looking pretty good for this. So now let's say that the way that I've set this up is not necessarily how you would want to go about doing this. So maybe because you were able to find this on a web page, you don't necessarily want to go through this trouble of uh, downloading that image, saving it somewhere on your computer system, and then having to go and fetch it from whatever location, whatever directory you happen to put that image into. Let's say that maybe you wanted to be able to just get that image directly from that web page where you found it. So we'll go ahead and close this. And there's actually another protocol that we could use instead of the file protocol. So in addition to that, I might specify it here. Uh, yeah, so take a quick look here. So uh, the first protocol that we've taken a look at is the file protocol. We specified a, an image file that we wanted to locate somewhere on our computer system. In this case, it was just bluebonnets.png. We put it in our default directory, that project directory. Uh, the other protocol that we could use is the HTTP protocol. Or, in this case, since the majority of images or the majority of web pages tend to use HTTPS instead nowadays, uh, you could also think of this as the HTTPS protocol. Uh, and this is going to be used to specify an image file from some internet location instead. So let's try that out. So to use that, I'll come back over here and go ahead and just grab this entire URL. Just go ahead and copy that. I'll come over to NetBeans, and I'll go ahead and just paste that right here. Uh, we're not going to worry too much about the fact that it kind of goes off the line. Uh, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and modify this to cut it apart and concatenate everything, but it's extra trouble that I'm not going to worry too much about for this. Uh, so in this case, we've got the entire URL along that single line, and if we go ahead and run this again, it will uh, show us the same behavior. It's still going to display that image. The only thing that's different is that in the background what's happening is that now instead of looking on our computer system to go find it, what it's instead doing is using that URL to make some kind of request, say like a, an HTTP request, to go grab that image from whatever web page it's located on. So if we go ahead and run this, we can still display the image and the only thing that's changed is just what's happening in the background. Okay. So, next thing we'll go ahead and take a look at, now that we've seen that, is how we might go about adjusting the dimensions of this a little bit. So let's say that maybe we wanted to make this a little bit smaller so that uh, we could maybe add more content to a single application window, and we wanted to keep that content a little bit smaller to kind of fit everything together, rather than having several images that are all you know, roughly 1500 pixels uh, in width, or maybe another thousand pixels in height. 
uh, having these very large images in your uh, in a very large application window, maybe that's not necessarily what you want to do. Maybe you want to uh, fit everything down a little bit or scale everything down a little bit. So what we could do there is we can actually use two methods with our uh, images to uh, modify the dimensions of them. So those are going to be set fit width and set fit height. And as each one of those would suggest, the first one's going to be used to modify the uh, width of our image, and then the second is going to be used to modify the height of the image. So let's test those out. So if the image is 1500 by 609, let's say that we want to uh, reduce each of those dimensions uh, in half. So let's say if we come over here, we've got our image uh, right here. And after we set up this image view, we want to go ahead and set the height and the width. So if the width is originally 1500, let's say we want to divide that by 2, we'll make that something like 750. And if the height is 609, we'll go ahead and divide that by 2 as well. That's going to give us something like uh, about 304, so we'll go ahead and use that. So do 304 right there. We'll go ahead and save that. Uh, the other thing we're going to need to go ahead and do, if we were to run this right now, it will resize the image, but because we haven't specified any kind of alignment for it, it's still going to keep that in the upper left hand corner, kind of like what it did to the label when we were adjusting the size of the window in our previous application. So I want to go ahead and make sure that this is also centered. So we'll go ahead and add in that pause class that comes from our geometry package. So we'll go ahead and just put that right at the end of all of our imports. So do another import, do javafx.geometry.pause. Go ahead and save that and then come down here and go ahead and actually use that pause class. So we've got our uh, VBox right here and I want to go ahead and also set the alignment for it. So we'll do VBox dot set alignment and for this one we're going to do pause dot center okay go ahead and save that and then we will run it so now we'll have our image a little bit shrunken down and then centered in our application window so right now the way we got this it's looking pretty good uh, because of the fact that we resized it to make sure that the height and the width maintained the same original ratio, so that 1500 by 609 ratio, uh, at least approximately, uh, we don't really see anything distorted about this image, so there's no stretching in either the horizontal or vertical direction. So let's consider what might happen if I were to leave off one of these dimensions. So let's go ahead and close this. And let's say that uh, maybe I don't specify a height for this. You know, considering the fact that that height uh, should technically be like 3 or 4.5, since it's got a 9 on the end there, uh, giving it just this integer value of 3 or 4 isn't exactly right. So maybe what I would kind of prefer to do is to just rely on the width and maybe try to automatically set the height. Uh, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is just comment out this line. Uh, the shortcut for this, if you're trying to do this yourself, uh, is to do control and uh, forward slash. Uh, that'll go ahead and comment out that line. And then, of course, if you wanted to, you could do it again to uncomment it. But we're going to go ahead and remove that line. Uh, we'll go ahead and save this as well. And let's go ahead and run it again and see how that looks. So if I do that, uh, there's a little bit of a problem with this, which is that uh, by default, with the way that uh, JavaFX handles images, it's not actually going to resize the height just because I specified a new width for it. So by default, it does not actually try to preserve that ratio, the original ratio for the image. Uh, the original ratio, uh, that's what's known as the aspect ratio. So what we want to try to do is come up with a way to preserve that aspect ratio. And thankfully, there's a very convenient way to do this, uh, which is that in JavaFX, for our image views, there's just a method that will actually do this for us, which is the set preserve ratio method. So this method is going to take a Boolean, either true or false, 
if it's given false, this is basically the same as the default behavior. It just won't try to preserve that aspect ratio. But if we give it the value true, then it will actually try to preserve the aspect ratio. And there are a couple of different guidelines that we have to keep in mind about uh, how it's going to handle this process of preserving the aspect ratio. So we'll go through each one of these real quick just to make sure that you understand the general rules for this. Uh, so if you set both the images width and height, then both of these are going to be scaled to try to get the closest possible fit. So trying to consider the closest range uh, for both the width and height while preserving the aspect ratio. If on the other hand, you only specify the width or you only specify the height, then the other dimension, so with only the width then the height will be scaled automatically to preserve the aspect ratio, or if it's only the height, then the width will be scaled to preserve the aspect ratio. So in our case, we take a quick look at, uh, let's go ahead and close this. And if we go ahead and take a quick look at this, so the way that I'm trying to do this right now, I'm commenting out the line where we set the height. So I'm trying to rely on just the width. So the height should automatically be adjusted to preserve the aspect ratio. So we'll go ahead and add this extra method call right here. We'll do image view dot uh, set preserve ratio. Go ahead and grab that. And typically, if you're going to use this method, the expectation is that you want to set it to true. If you're going to set it to false, you might as well not include it. So if you auto-complete this with uh, NetBeans auto-complete suggestions, by default, it's going to assume that you want this to be true. So it's going to go ahead and do that for us. So we'll go ahead and save this. And then we'll go ahead and run it. And if we take a look now, now we can see the image has actually been resized along the height to preserve the aspect ratio. And in this case now, this will be more exact since now it'll actually account for that extra 0.5 that I originally left off. So admittedly, this is so small that you wouldn't be able to tell the difference, but this is technically more exact than what I was originally using. Okay. And then one additional thing to mention here, uh, just briefly, is that if we wanted to change the contents of this image, uh, the way that we would go about doing that is by using this set image method. So if we wanted to change this image to something else, this is the method that we uh, would use. And I'll do a bit more of a, a, an actual demonstration of this when I start talking a little bit more about buttons that'll come a little bit later when I'm talking about more uh, interactive content for JavaFX applications. So for now, I just want you to keep in mind that this method exists and I'll actually demonstrate how to use it a little bit later. Uh, but one other thing that I wanna go ahead and talk about, since I did mention about scene graphs that I wanted to kind of go through uh, demonstrating scene graphs for a couple of our different applications. What I wanna go ahead and do for this one is just add in one additional uh, image. Uh, it'll actually just be the same image, but I'm gonna use it two times. Uh, and then I wanna go ahead and uh, just show briefly the, uh, the scene graph uh, when we're using a VBox with two items inside of it. So we can start to see a little bit more about trying to sketch out the uh, design with our scene graphs. And then also talking a little bit about that sketch, if we were going to demonstrate the application window or kind of just, uh, just draw that out and then being able to show the content being added to our VBox. So if we take a quick look at that, uh, if this is gonna be our first image, we're gonna go ahead and do all this with it. Uh, let's say that I wanted to go ahead and grab all this and do pretty much the same thing. So what I'll go ahead and do is just uh, copy all of this. And then right here, we'll go ahead and paste it all in. And of course, it'll complain about all of this because I'm using image and image view twice. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just modify the names of these. So instead of calling this image, I'll call this image two. And install, instead of calling this image view, image view two. And then right here, this is going to be for image view two. This is going to be for image view two. And inside of our VBox, what I'm going to go ahead and do is in addition to our image view, I'm going to add image view two. So the way this is going to work is it'll be a comma separated list. And for a VBox, the first item that I put in is going to be at the top of my VBox. And then each image that I put in after it is going to go underneath the previous item. So in this case, image view will be at the top image view two will be underneath image view. In this case, that means it'll be the bottom most item. If we added a third item, that would go underneath image view two. 
and then that item would become the bottommost item. Okay, uh, one other thing I'm going to go ahead and do is just to make sure that both protocols are included here to make this demo feel a bit more complete. I'll go ahead and put in the file protocol again. I'll do that bluebonnets.png. Go ahead and save that. And then should have everything ready to go. Uh, one other thing I'll go ahead and do, uh, 1500, the width of this, because we're doing it with a VBox, should still be fine. Uh, the height, on the other hand, I need to go ahead and adjust this a little bit. So let's say for this one, I want to go ahead and give this a height of something like a thousand for right now. And I think a thousand should be long enough for both images to be visible in the window. If it's not, I'll go ahead and adjust this again to make sure that everything's visible. So we'll go ahead and run this, take a quick look at it, and yep, okay. So this looks good enough, uh, at least for a sort of a first draft of this application. So at this point now we can see our VBox with the two images. So this first image that we have at the top, this is the one that's coming from the HTTPS protocol. And then the second image underneath, that's the one coming from the file protocol. So now that I've got this, uh, for the last step going through this video, we'll take a quick look at uh, writing up the scene graph for this application. So for this particular application, what we did was we created a VBox. So that's gonna be the root node in our scene graph, so then create that. Adjust the size on this a little bit more. And this is gonna be our VBox. Post that here. And inside of this VBox, what we had was two controls, so two images. Uh, these are gonna be branch nodes, since these can't have additional children come with them. So go ahead and draw this out. Uh, let's go ahead and add each one of those right here and right here Go ahead and connect each of those and for each one of these it's going to be for each of those two images uh, specifically this is going to be for the image views since those are the things that are actually displayed in our application window so those are going to be the things that i put into my scene graph so the first one was just image view, go ahead and place that here. And then the second one was image view two. And we'll go ahead and place that here. Okay, so this is gonna make up the fairly simple scene graph for this particular application. And then if we were going to try to provide a pretty simple sketch to go with our scene graph, the way that we could describe this, say we've got our application window, something kind of like this, Inside of that application window, we would have our VBox. So that's primarily going to be something that is uh, more tall than it is long. So we'd have something kind of like this to demonstrate the VBox that we're going to have inside of our application window. And then inside of that VBox, we're going to have two items. So we'll have our two images. So inside of there, we might have one image at the top and then another image underneath it. So this is a pretty good sketching or pretty good representation of what our application window is expected to look like. So then if I go ahead and add in each of these, we know that the image view, the first one, would go right here, and then image view two is expected to go right here. So this gives us both our scene graph and also a pretty simple sketch of the application that we worked on here. Uh, going into the next video, we're going to start taking a look at uh, again, going through a little bit about containers. So we'll be looking at the VBox and the HBox in a bit more detail. In addition to that, we're also going to look at another uh, container, which is going to be the grid pane layout. So that's going to be everything that we cover in the next video.